happy Monday, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Today, we're talking about animal control bylaws. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Susan Santix was the owner of a dog named Punky, who was sentenced to death as a result of its designation as a dangerous dog. Miss Santix appealed, arguing that she could come up with a safety plan for her dog and that the animal control officer uh, ought to have imposed the safety plan as opposed to ordering that the dog be destroyed. The courts have been divided on the question of whether or not animal control has the right to impose conditions on a dog or whether the courts can put conditions on a dog instead of ordering that the dog be destroyed and upholding orders that the dog be destroyed. Unfortunately, the court found in Miss Santic's case that Punky needed to be destroyed. And this is a very, very sad outcome because Miss Santic really cared about her dog. The problem that arises in this case is that there's still a real lack of clarity across the country when it comes to animal control officers and what they can and can't do, what the test is for a dangerous dog, and who has the burden of proving that a dog is dangerous. And these are important issues. Maybe to many people, they might seem like minor bylaw offense cases involving very limited disputes. But to people who have animals, to people who love animals, and to people who care about them, clarification on these aspects of the law and getting some direction from the Supreme Court of Canada, particularly with our more advanced understanding of animal rights and the welfare of animals, is better. I mean, isn't it better for everybody if the courts have the ability to essentially put dogs on probation and require them to comply with conditions like dog counseling and, and dog benefits? Um, to try and eliminate the potential for a dangerous dog rather than taking away a loved family member, which is what pets often are to their owners. This is something that the Supreme Court of Canada really should have considered as far as the emotional impact that these orders have on Canadians throughout the country every year and the emotional impact that it has on people who care about the welfare of animals. They had an opportunity here to maybe make things a little bit better for animals, to maybe expand the scope of animal control laws just ever so slightly so that people who have pets and who want to keep their pets alive because they love them have a little bit more of an opportunity to challenge decisions made by cities to designate dogs as dangerous and to order that those dogs be destroyed. As it stands, unfortunately, animal control officers in many cities across this country have far too much power when it comes to decision making about pets and the courts are often at the mercy of administrative law that is far too stringent in this context. This was an unfortunate miss for the Supreme Court of Canada and one that really tugs at my heartstrings. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law. Thank you to Brazen Bull Creative for putting together these videos. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends.